my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a week of handmade outfits. So I'm going to be sharing what I wore for the first week of Me Made May. Um, if you're not sure what Me Made May is, it's a sewing kind of, I want to say challenge, but it's not really. It's something that's quite personal to you as a sewist. You don't have to have a crammed full Me Made wardrobe. You can have a couple of pieces of Me Made items. Um, and we're just encouraged to think about our relationship with our handmade garments, um, what we're wearing, what we're not wearing, is there a reason why we're not reaching for those garments and what can we do to breathe new life into them. For this year's Me Made May, I just want to continue enjoying wearing my handmade clothes. I am going to think really carefully about what I don't reach for and why I don't reach for them and how I can make them come back into my wardrobe. And also just think about my styling and maybe some of the summer garments which I am wearing today. When it's a colder day, how can I get more wear out of the garments that are better for warmer weather by using sort of layering pieces? Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I just want to continue to embrace my handmade wardrobe and continue to embrace all the lovely bright colours that I get so much joy out of wearing. So I'm going to tell you what I wore for days one all the way through to day seven. And then next week I'll share what I wore for week two and so on. Um, and I thought it would just be a really good way of you seeing what garments I've got in my wardrobe because I'm also challenging myself to wear something new for every day in the month of May. And moving forward from May, I think I would like to continue thinking about how I can get the most out of my wardrobe and wear some of those older makes as well. So I'm not going to start with what I'm wearing because this is what I wore on day seven, but I will get round to talking about um, this garment. So I'm going to start with day one. Um, I'm not going to put on all of the outfits, but I am going to put pictures in of me wearing them. So the first day of Me Made May was quite chilly um, and you'll be able to see as the week went on, the weather got warmer and I managed to wear some of my warmer um, sort of garments, my garments that are suitable for the warmer weather. So day one, I decided to go for my By Hand London Leo dungarees and I've got several pairs of these dungarees but I haven't been reaching for them lately. Um, and I just wore them with a Freya top, which is a Tilly in the Buttons pattern. So I've got the dungarees here and the top, so I'll show you what they look like. Um, the fabric for the dungarees, it's a viscose twill that I got from uh, Rainbow Fabrics ages ago. Like these I made maybe last autumn, I think I might have made them. But I love the uh, By Hand London Leo dungarees. They're a really oversized fit dungaree. They've got a bib front and a bib back. The lovely tie detail. There's, they've got they've got like this gorgeous little scoop on each side, and then the dungarees are gathered into the bib at the front, and they're gathered into the bib at the back. They're super wide fitting and really oversized, and then you finish them with elastic at the bottom as well. They're really really comfortable. And then I just paired it with a Tilly in the Buttons Freya top. Apologies, it's a little bit creased because I've just grabbed it from my wardrobe, but it's just in this mustard cotton jersey that I got from Abcan Fabrics. And that goes really nicely with the mustard flowers that you've got on that fabric. Um, I think it really draws those out. And then the Freya top is just from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Um, and there it is. It's the Freya sweater and dress. I'll show you the line drawings. Um, that is the pattern. Um, I've worn a couple of my Freya tops as base layers that go with quite a lot of things that I've got in my wardrobe. Um, it's from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book and it comes in sizes 1 up to 8, which is the Tilly and the Button sizes. So for a 1, it's a 30 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement, 33 inch hip measurement. And then for an 8, it's a 44 inch bust measurement, 38 inch waist measurement and 47 inch hip measurement. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations for the Freya, light to medium weight sweater knits, rib knits, jersey or ponty roma with at least 25% crosswise stretch. And I really love that pattern. I love the mock turtleneck um, sort of band that you've got up here. Um, it feels really, really comfortable and it's a really nice sort of base layer as well. And then I've got the information here for the By Hand London Leo dungarees. So those are the image photos on the front of the pattern. And then um, the dungarees come in UK sizes 6 to 34. There's the line drawing so you can see. It's got this quite narrow, um, sort of quite short bib at the front and the back. And then it's got this sort of scoop detail at the sides. Really quite billowy trousers. You've got the tie fastens on the shoulders. And then you've got elastic at the bottom. 
um, and it's described as quite possibly the most ludicrously comfortable pair of dungarees you will ever wear. The Leo dungarees feature a deep crotch and gloriously loose legs that are elasticated at the ankles and gently pleated at the waist. A simple bib front and back construction and adjustable shoulder ties, a satisfyingly quick sew, a joy to wear and plenty of scope for hacking and customisation. And then just to say the bib is lined, uh, both the front and the back bib are lined. Uh, so there. So really lovely, really comfortable to wear. In terms of sizes, for a UK 6, it's a high bust measurement of 30 inches, a bust measurement of 32 inches, a waist measurement of 25 inches and a hip measurement of 35 inches. And then for a UK 34, it's a 64 inch high bust, 66 inch bust measurement, 59 inch waist measurement and 69 inch hip measurement. Um, in terms of fabrics, they recommend natural fibres and floaty drapey weaves, which are key to your comfortable pair of Leos. They love viscose chalice, viscose twill, viscose cotton linen blends, soft enzyme washed linen, double gauze, chambray and flannel. And because I've used a viscose twill, which is really drapey, you get a really lovely billowy effect um, from the dungarees. So that's what I wore on day one. So day two was a sewing day for me. So I had the whole day to cut out project and sew and it was really enjoyable. I obviously stopped to feed my family and eat lunch and dinner. Um, but I had as much of that day to sew, so I didn't actually get dressed. So I decided to wear my Nina Lee uh, pyjamas that I've just finished in this Rifle Paper Company fabric. I'll just grab the pattern. So it's a Nina Lee pattern and it's called the Piccadilly pyjamas. It's got really interesting detail to them. You can either sew up the shorts with the cat sleeve shirt or you can sew up the three quarter length shirt and the three quarter length trousers. I sewed up the three quarter length trousers and I did the cap sleeve um, shirt. It's got this lovely soft mandarin collar, um, fairly open sort of neckline and then you've got buttons. Really lovely um, detailing on the pockets. And then the trousers and the shirt have got these beautiful curves. And then you're supposed to finish them with bias, but I actually finished them with piping. And then I had these two fabrics, which were a Rifle Paper Company fabric that I knew I wanted to put together. So my trousers are here and then they're elasticated in the back, the trousers. And then you've got a drawstring at the front. So I just used the mint green ribbon. And then I used piping to finish the curves. So just on the end there, which I'm really pleased with how that's turned out, um, obviously on both of them. And then the shirt, I went for these sort of vintagey buttons that I got from Rainbow Fabrics there, which I think go really nicely with that colour. And then I also finished the cap sleeve with piping and I finished the bottom, the hem with piping as well. And you've got that curve there and then you've got the curve here and then you've got a really gorgeous sort of slight curve on the pockets as well. Um, and then you've got that mandarin collar and then I decided to finish it with a slowly does it sloth um, label just to remind myself that sometimes it's OK to have a slow day um, because I only managed to sew up. I think I only sewed up one thing when I had that sew day, but I managed to cut lots of things out as well. And I just really enjoyed um, having musical in the background. And then I moved on to watching vlogs um, and I just really enjoyed just having some time dedicated to sewing. Um, it was really enjoyable and I just leisurely sewed, which was really fun. So that's what I wore. For the Piccadilly pyjamas, um, they come in UK sizes 6 to 20. So for a UK 6, it's a 32 inch bust measurement, 24 inch waist measurement, 33 and a half inch hip measurement. And then a UK 20 is a 46 inch bust, 38 inch waist, 47 and a half inch hip measurement. They're a chic sleepwear set with oriental accents, a soft and open mandarin collar, gently curving hems. Version one consists of shorts and cap sleeve shirt and version two crop trousers and a shirt with three quarter length sleeves. Um, and then in terms of suitable fabrics, they recommend soft, lightweight fabrics that will feel good against your skin, like a cotton lawn, a rayon and silk satin. And I have got some satin, which I think would make a really luxurious pair of these pyjamas. So that was day two. And then day three, it was a work day and it was still a little bit chilly. So I popped on another Freya top, just in a grey. I'm just looking for it, actually. I don't know if I... Oh, it's here. It's on the floor. <laughs> um, I just wore a grey uh, Tilly the Buttons Freya sweatshirt with long sleeves as a really lovely, cosy base layer. And then I paired it with my uh, Little Pomegranate uh, Sabina skirt made in this viscose. I can't remember where I got this viscose from, I'm afraid. 
um, but I love the, the Sabina skirt. It's got elasticated waistband. It's got these really lovely slanted pockets. You can omit the pockets by just cutting out two of the back pieces. And then it's got this gorgeous ruffle on the bottom as well. Um, really comfortable to wear. I love how swishy it is in that viscose as well. And green's my favourite colour. So I really enjoyed wearing that skirt paired with that, um, just the plain frayer top. And then I've got the pattern here, just in case you haven't heard of the Sabine skirt. It's a free pattern by The Little Pomegranate. You need to go over to their blog and then subscribe to the newsletter and then you'll get access to the pattern. Um, but it's aimed at beginners and aimed at using woven fabrics. And um, that's what it looks like there. And it comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 34. It's a gathered skirt which sits on your waist, designed for easy fitting. It's got an elasticated waistband, gently sh gentle shaping at the hips, roomy pockets and a ruffle hem. Um, and it's been designed with beginners in mind. In terms of fabrics, they recommend medium weight woven fabrics um, like cotton lawn, poplin shirt and seersucker and linen for beginners. And then if you've got a little bit more experience sewing, then you could go on to using a drapier fabric like a viscose rayon, tensile twill or crepe because they give a floaty and more fluid skirt, but they are a little bit trickier to sew with. Um, and those are the line drawings. Um, I absolutely love this skirt. I've sewn up, I think, four versions so far, and it's really comfortable to wear as well. In terms of sizes, for a UK 6, it's a 25-inch waist measurement and 34.5-inch hip measurement. And then for a 34, it's a 51.5-inch waist and a 61-inch hip measurement. So I'm really pleased with that outfit, and I think um, this skirt's got potential to go with so many different tops um, and T-shirts as well, actually. Um, and it was really comfortable to wear to school. Day four was a PE day, um, and I have a PE uniform that I wear. So I wasn't me made on top, but I was me made on the bottom. And I've got quite a few pairs of the pattern that I'm gonna talk about, which is a sew over it pattern. And it's the Hubie leggings, which I absolutely love. I've got this amazing active wear, which is so bright from Hey Sew Sister. Just absolutely love that print. I got quite a few compliments when I wore these to work. I love the Hubie leggings. They've got that really deep um, band at the top and the same on the back. And then they're quite close fitting, um, which is great, really comfortable. Um, this active wear has got really good stretch, but also really good recovery as well. And they're really comfortable leggings to wear to work, um, especially when I'm running around and chasing after lots of four and five year olds. Um, so the pattern is the Hubie leggings and it's by Sew Over It. So I'll just give you some information about the pattern now. I don't actually have the pattern in front of me, but I will put in line drawings and pictures so you can see what they look like. So in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight knit fabrics like an active wear um, and like a lycra jersey with at least 50% stretch. And then in terms of sizes, it comes in a UK 6 to 30, which is split into two bands. So a UK 6 to 20, or an 18 to 30. For a UK 6, it's a bust measurement of 31 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches, and then a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then for a UK 30, it's a 57 inch bust measurement, 50 inch waist, and a 60 inch hip measurement. I really love the Hubie leggings pattern, it's super comfortable, and I've sewn up quite a few pairs. So it means that I'll be able to wear a different pair of Hubie leggings each week across the month of May. So on to day five, and the weather was getting a little bit warmer, but what I find with the spring weather is it's a little bit chilly in the morning, but then the sun comes out and it gets really warm as the day goes on. So I always find that I need to have like a jacket on as a layering piece initially. So on day five, I wore a Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress made in this cotton poplin that I got from Fabric Godmother. I've just got the dress on inside out because it's been in the wash. So I used this gorgeous floral fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother and this was the version that I wore and then I paired it with a Sorrento denim jacket. Um, I think I paired it with my lilac Sorrento denim jacket which I'll put a picture in of now because uh, I've got some sort of pink flowers there but I've got a duck egg blue one as well which I could definitely pair with this dress. I love the Lyra dress and I used vintage buttons for this one as well. Um, I've got the pattern here to talk about. So this is the pattern here. It's the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. I've sewn up so many versions. I think I've sewn about 10 versions of this shirt dress because I absolutely love it. Um, it says, if you want to swoosh around in effortless, mega comfy style, then meet Lyra, your new best friend. It's an ultra cool shirt dress which has an oversized blousy bodice with bust darts, button front opening, two-piece collar and stand, and of course, side seam pockets. 
The gathered skirt can be hemmed just above the knee or add the midi panel for a trendy tiered look. And then there's different sleeve options as well. Um, so you can choose between short sleeves for easy breezy summer style or full length billowy sleeves with elasticated cuff. Um, so this is the longer version with that extra tier. And then these are the line drawings, that's the knee length version. So you've got these sleeves here that finish with elastic or you've got the shorter length sleeves as well. And then you've got just the gathered skirt or you can add on the extra tier as well for some length. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics like a cotton lawn, a voile, seersucker chambray, double gauze, viscose, tensile and lighter weight needle cord. And I've actually got some lighter weight needle cord that I would love to turn into a Lyra shirt dress. In terms of sizes, this comes in their extended size range. Um, so you've got UK 6 to 24 or UK 16 to 34. So for UK 6, it's a bust measurement of 30 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches and a hip measurement of 33 inches. And then for a 34, it's a 60 inch bust measurement, a 56 inch high bust measurement, 53 inch waist measurement and 61 inch hip measurement. And then I've got my Sorrento denim jacket here. I've got the duck egg blue one here, the lilac one I didn't grab actually, but they're both exactly the same. Um, but I absolutely love, let me pop it on over the top of here actually, it goes with so many different things, it's going to make the ruffle stick actually, but you'll be able to see what it looks like. It's a nice cropped length denim jacket and it's perfect when you just want a layering piece, when it's a little bit chilly. So I'll stand up so you can see, so my hips here, so it stops just above, just at my natural waist. I absolutely love the Sorrento jacket. It's from the So Over It um, Capsule Wardrobe Summer Dreaming ebook. Um, so it's called My Capsule Wardrobe at Summer Dreaming. So it's your classic sort of denim jacket with all the classic denim jacket features, um, like a front and back yoke. So if you can see, you've got the front yoke and then you've got the back yoke. Um, it's got chest pockets, as you can see, it's got the tabs on the waistband. Um, you've got the cuff on the sleeve and then you've got the placket there as well as you would expect um, and then you've got the lovely collar detail as well it's such a lovely versatile jacket and I've sewn it up in quite a few colours as well I've sewn it up in corduroy as well so it would work really well for a corduroy fabric um, in terms of sizes for the capsule wardrobe summer dreaming ebook it comes in UK sizes 6 to 30 so for the surrender jacket and all the patterns that are in that ebook for a UK 6 a bust measurement of 31 inches, a waist measurement of 24 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then for a 30, it's a 57 inch bust measurement, 50 inch waist measurement and 60 inch hip measurement. And then I just used this duck egg blue denim that I got from Fabric Godmother. Now the pattern for the Sorrento jacket doesn't call for a st stretch denim, but this denim and the lilac version that I sewed up is does have a little bit of stretch, but it was absolutely fine sewing it up. It didn't distort the fit or anything like that. And that I've worn it so many times, like hundreds of times since I made all of my denim jackets. My favourite Sorrento jacket is a denim jacket that I made and I wore it actually with this dress um, on day seven of Me Made May. It's a denim jacket, just traditional blue denim jacket, but it's got this green like fringing on the sleeves and on the back. And I really loved that version. It's a really fun version. So on to day six. And again, it was a work day. Um, but I knew the weather was going to be warm, but I wasn't sure how warm it would be. So I wore one of my favourite uh, dresses um, and it's inside out because it's been washed. I'm just going to turn it the right way around. Um, but it is the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress. And I used this um, jersey fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics in this green colourway. And it's got all these gorgeous little flowers all over it. It's really pretty. And I sewed up the maxi length with the extra tier on the bottom and then you can also add a belt and what I always do with my Westcliff dresses is I always um, attach the belt as waist ties and I just sew it into the side seam so if I hold it up it's so long and bouncy this dress it's tricky to hold up but it's got a faux wrap and then where the uh, side seam is I just sandwich the um, ties into the side seams so I can wrap it round. I just worry about losing the belt, which is why I attach them as that. And then you can just tie it at the back if you want to, or you can bring it around the front and tie it at the side as well. I absolutely love the Westcliff dress. It's one of my favourite patterns. 
Um, I've got the paper pattern. I think it's in extended sizes up to 7X now. So if it is, I'll link down below so you can find out the measurements for 7X. And I'll also put some information in as well. Um, but this is the pattern. It's by Friday Pattern Companies and it's the Westcliff dress. Again, I've made loads of versions of this pattern. I absolutely love it. I've made some knee length versions, but I've also made some versions like this with that extra tier on the bottom to turn it into a maxi dress. And then you've got that belt detail as well faux wrap, short sleeves, and it's just ultimate pyjamas. Um, it feels so comfortable to wear. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, if I open up the booklet, um, it's perfect for knit fabrics of all kinds. You need at least 25% stretch. If you choose a knit with more body like a ponte, it'll have a more structured look. And if you sew it in a drapier knit, it'll have a more romantic look. Um, in terms of sizes, for the paper pattern that I've got, an extra small is a 32 to 33 inch bust measurement, 24 to 25 inch waist measurement, and 34 to 35 inch hip measurement. And then a 4X is a 53 to 54 inch bust measurement, 46 to 47 inch waist measurement, and 56 to 57 inch hip measurement. It's a stylish and comfortable knit dress with that faux um, wrap front, an A-line skirt, and then the option to have that gathered lower tier. The pattern includes a simple tie belt and it's perfect for everyday wear but can also be dressed up for any occasion. I absolutely love it and like I said it's definitely secret pyjamas. And then that takes me on to day seven which was the weekend and it was a lovely sunny day uh, when I got dressed and then when I took the photos you'll see in the photos it got very grey and very dark, the sky, and I thought it was going to rain. But I kept the dress on and I just put a denim jacket on. And it didn't rain actually all day. And it felt sort of quite muggy weather where it was really cloudy and looked like it was going to rain at any minute. But actually it was still quite warm. So I kept on my Bella Loves floor dress. I absolutely love this pattern. I've sewn it up quite a few times now and I just love everything about it. It's got these amazing ruffles that come down the front bodice and then go down the back bodice on both sides um it's got tie uh so it's got waistband and then you fasten it at the side and then it's got this gorgeous maxi length skirt that's got a ruffle on the bottom it's just amazing i absolutely love it it's definitely got the swish factor um this isn't something that i would wear to work because of that neckline it's quite open um, and it's also um, sleeveless as well. So I save my floor dresses for uh, the weekend. Um, and I'm really pleased that we've started to get some sunshine so I can start to wear them. But I have actually tried pairing them with a polo neck underneath and just a short sleeve t-shirt and that works perfectly as well. Um, I have put jackets on but I worry about the ruffles getting scrunched up with a jacket on. I don't have the printed pattern in front of me, but I have got the pattern details in front of me so I can let you know some more information about the floor dress. Um, so it's by Bella Loves. It's a dress, but you can also do a cropped top. So the top would stop where that waistband is so you wouldn't have the skirt detail on there. I meant to say it's also uh, got pockets as well, um, which is always handy. Um, it comes in sizes UK 6 to 20. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend lightweight fabrics with a bit of structure. So a cotton, cotton lawn, cotton poplin, seersucker. Um, I've used a linen recently for my most recent um, floor dress, which works really nicely as well. In terms of sizes, for a UK 6, oh, and it also has different cup sizes as well, which I'll share with you now. So there's an A, B cup, a C cup and a D cup. So for a UK 6, A, B cup is a 31 and a half inch measurement. For a C cup, it's a 32 and a half inch measurement and a D cup, a 33 and a half inch measurement. And then a waist for a UK six is 23 and a half inches and a hip measurement is 33 inches. And then for a UK 20, it's a 44 and a half inch measurement for an AB cup, 45 and a half inch measurement for a C cup and 46 and a half inch measurement for a D cup. And then for a waist for a UK 20, it's 36 inches and a hip measurement of 46 inches. I really love this dress. I love the way it looks and I love the way that it fits um, and I love the way that it makes me feel as well. I haven't tied it particularly well, which is why it keeps opening a little bit there. But um, oh, this gingham came in a box from Sir Hayley Jane as well, which I really love. I think it's just such a fun print, absolutely gorgeous and quite a classic print as well. So that was everything that I wore in the first week of Me Made May. And I did think really carefully about grabbing some of those older makes, like the Byham London Leo Dungarees, because I haven't worn those for a while. I also thought really carefully about layering um, and what 
outfits would go together. Um, before I chose my Westcliff dress, I did have a bit of a fashion show where I was pairing lots of different things, trying to grab older makes from my wardrobe as well and making sure that I celebrate all of the things that I've got in my handmade wardrobe. Do let me know down below what your favourite garment was that I wore across the week. Um, and I am going to be sharing each week all of my handmade outfits and it will hopefully give you an insight into all of the things that I've got in my wardrobe. I'm going to try my very best not to do any outfit repeats, but one thing that will be repeated are the outerwear layers. So my Sorrento jackets or my bomber jacket, I've been wearing lots and lots and I've got some other like cardigans and things or frayer tops that are plain. So you may see those being worn um, across the month just because they're such versatile pieces and I'm using them as layering pieces. But dresses and trousers and dungarees and that sort of thing, I'm hoping not to do any outfit repeats with those. Um, thank you as always for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button. You get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.